Good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to thank you guys for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally, literally does not work. So let's get open for business here, and let's wake up the football guys. Wake up here, guys. Wake up. How you guys doing on this Monday morning as we set 55 days, 11 hours, 9 minutes, 9 minutes and zero seconds away from the Dallas Cowboys kicking off against the Los Angeles Rams. I, I can't wait, man. I can't wait. And we are sitting here literally eight days away from training camps open up. The Texans and um, Kansas City's rookies report today for COVID tests, uh, Cowboys rookies report um, tomorrow, and this will be the first time the first time that the players are actually going to the facilities and being part of the season. This, this is crazy when you think about it. We had the draft months ago, and yet the teams have not been able to do anything other than virtual workouts with the players, and now they're finally getting here. Now, the problem, of course, is the NFL is still trying to figure out what the hell they're doing. There's no agreement right now, and the NFL still wants the players to show up on time to start working out with a plan that they don't have at this moment. And there's a lot of players out there that say, we want to play, but we want to do this safely, and we want to play it. We know that D-Law has now talked about, you know, the, the rationale of, you know, my family, my wife, and my unborn child is more important than football. And regardless of the money, this is what I kind of tried to explain yesterday. It's one thing when you go out on the football field and you put your body, your mind, everything on the line for football. You could be maimed. You could be crippled. You, you know, you could have things happen to you to you the difference now is you're not only going on the field by yourself if you're exposing yourself to the possible coronavirus you're also taking everybody else around you on the field as well and make no mistake about it we all want football the players want football but they want to make sure that they are safe as possible and there may be no way to mitigate the risk completely I mean, every time we all go out, we are risking ourselves. And as we see more and more people end up being sick and dying um, from this, we realize that we're all at risk. But there's things we can do to try and minimize it. I hope that they come up with a plan. One of the things that the NFLPA wanted to do, because players have not been able to work out, the way they normally would with OTAs and being around the training facilities and with the trainers and the strength coaches and all that is basically have 21 days of just getting in shape. No practices, strength and conditioning. Of course, there'll be classroom, you know, learning the plays and things, but waiting before they get out of the field because you can't take some of these guys who may or may not have equipment to really work out at home on their own and now think that they're going to be ready to start practicing next week. It's not going to happen. So they want to have 21 days of just working out. Then have 10 days of practices. I'm sorry, 8 days of practices without pads. And then like 8 to 10 padded practices and then go straight into the season. The NFL still, of course, wants to have two preseason games. We don't know where this is going to land. It's somewhere in the negotiations. We also have the question of opting out clauses because not only we we're talking about, you know, D-Law, Russell Wilson is kind of like, you know, my wife's pregnant, Sierra, and I'm not sure how I want to risk them with this as well. So there's going to be a lot of this season, I don't know if there'll be an asterisk by it or not, but it's going to be crazy because all of a sudden, if a Russell Wilson sits out for Seattle, all of a sudden, Seattle doesn't have a home field advantage. All of a sudden, Seattle's not the same team, clearly, as they are with the full capacity stadium and a Russell Wilson. So 
it will be interesting to see, and it may be more of a battle more than ever for this season, a battle of attrition of who can withstand losing the most players and still have good backups that are able to step up. I don't know how this season's going to go. I really just don't know. But it's going to be interesting to say the least. Um, and I'm still curious about college football. If that, in fact, is going to go on or not. And if it doesn't, you know the NFL will take up the oxygen in the room. I had heard before that there was a plan that the NFL could switch games onto Saturdays to help make up for college football not being there. Now, the NFL has said, you know, when the NCAA has kind of come to them and said, you know, what do you think about a spring season? They're like, nah, we don't want to deal with that because we're not moving the draft. Um, but the reality may be, as we hear about more and more of these colleges that are having lots of tested players positive, um, for the coronavirus that it may not be conceivable to have college life and players on campus um, to play football and to be able to travel to other teams. I don't see how that's possible. It's going to be difficult enough just for the NFL, but everything has changed for this season. Um, it, it really has. And the thing that's hard for you know, people like me and Law Nation and Vosh and stuff like that is we love to talk about football. And usually we have so many things that we have already to talk about. You know, the OTAs where you get a little taste of what Mike McCarthy is going to be doing with the offense and stuff like that. And trying to figure out the different camp battles and things like that of who's who and so on. You know, getting a little, just a little taste of the rookies and things like that. Well, this training camp is not going to be like before where we all can go out to Oxnard and watch practice and see these guys, see these camp battles, see who seems to be working out with the first string and things like that, see guys who seem to be a disappointment. Everything's going to be behind closed doors or through video conferencing. We probably won't have the journalists at training camp on a regular basis. They certainly won't be in the locker room for interviews. And it's going to be that much harder to get the news and what's going on out there, along with less practices than normal. So this is truly going to be uncharted. Now, we'll do the best that we can to bring you all the news and things on what's happening with the team and so on. But, um, yeah, it's going to be crazy. I just wish we could get a grip on this coronavirus, that people would understand that you can't live life right now like we normally do. Um, because when we do, we spread it. And when we spread it, we keep spreading it. And it just keeps growing and growing and growing. Um, I, for one, am tired of doing what we're doing, but I understand that we must do what we need to do to get to the other side. <sighs> we really need football. We really and truly need football. Well, tonight... Make sure you tune in, 9 o'clock Eastern. We'll have our live stream in here. We'll be talking about what else, the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, we're still reeling from the whole Dak Prescott lack of a new contract. Mike Fisher has an article out this morning I'm going to read. Um, basically, now there's odds on where Dak Prescott will play um, possibly next year. Um, the Dallas Cowboys, understand, <laughs> the price doesn't get cheaper. That next year, the Cowboys are going to have to pay a $37.8 million franchise tag with a possible reduced salary cap, get a long, or get a long-term deal done, or say goodbye to Dak Prescott. Can't believe that my Dallas Cowboys are actually still in the same position. 
but we'll definitely be filling in the details on that tonight. I'll see you guys soon. Uh, I got to go ahead and get to my day job. Have a good one.